one a a half you have one a a one a b c c one two g h h one two g h i i me one a b c d e f f forty forty years forty years forty years one that's it read it what it says my son you have achieved in four years <laughs> what took me forty years Barangil, it was because of your 40 years hard work that that I, that was possible. Because a person makes the basement first, and that takes time, and then the building comes up. So because of your 40 years hard work that I took four years, if it was in there, then I would have taken 44 years. <laughs> so because of Allah, Allah's help that, that we got guidance from you, that you did all this paid work and the hard work for 40 years, that's possible for us to do it in just a, sh a short time. So inshallah Allah will reward you for everything. We want all the all the people that love you and are doing just maybe the third fellow will also go. He's superstitious, you see. So he sends his daughter in law to the her father's house and conveniently he forgets. He doesn't want to recall her. So she's taking revenge. She gets the news that she's gonna to go to Timnet to share his sheep. So he sits by the wayside to waylay him. She's got a master plan. So now he's making his daughter-in-law pregnant. Twins. And these twins, Faris and Sarah, it says here, are the great grandfathers of your God Jesus Christ. Where does that fit in? Is that your doctrine? And the man is honored for be getting bastard children from his daughter-in-law. Because he becomes the great grandfather of your God Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 1 verse 3 says, And Judas beget Phares and Zara of Tamar. Who are they? Tell you Genesis chapter 38. You come to 38, he says, The father in law and daughter in law committing incest and begetting his bastard children are the great grandfathers of your God Jesus Christ. So, in your religion, you fertilize the ground or none. God kills him. But you fertilize your daughter-in-law, he blesses you. Make you the great grandfather of his son. Hmm? So I told him right. Zakir is arranging the Bangladesh thing. Right. So are you. And this is Zakir. This is Zakir. I said uh, first week in November we might go to Jeddah. Right. And then from there direct to Dhaka and back. Even if it's five days or something. Right, 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 right. Our reason there is to go to open up an IPCI center. Never we want to know what books they are publishing and how they are publishing. And millions of people are waiting and for And only one person will be accompanying us, will be Zakir. Nobody else. Sir, you are, are right? to go end no, November, no, no. not not mid November. He told me there's 120 million people in Bangladesh. Right. We like to go and meet the 199 million. Right. Since he won't be there, right. we'll make you a million out. Right. Okay. <laughs> so it doesn't matter who you're going to meet, but we are telling you, this is my father's new book to take with you. Oh yeah. And you got the choices when you, you got take it, with you. That's why I, I okay. go what is it? But I, I need two cassettes. The cassette I will give you. That's okay. my headache. Right. Right. But now what do you going to tell my father? You tell him because he's busy with another uh, yeah. important thing. So I'm leaving inshallah. Right. Um, and uh, end of the month inshallah. Okay sir. Alhamdulillah. Right. 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 Achha, so inshallah we'll yes. meet you yes. in Bangladesh yes. and you'll meet Zakir too. Yes. You are going with him. He will be there. Inshallah. So we'll meet him. Thank you very much. I have left my address to everything. Right. Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Right. right. So we carry on our lessons at home. You take that Bible. Take this Bible. That's it. Doctor Saab, tamhe kaha tamhe ghula pada tamhe? Assalamu alaikum. Ahinda doctor ra chata Bombay thi aave na tamhe dharman thi. This is Dr. Mal. Saab. Kem chai bhen? Alright. This is my daughter. Good see ya. Salaam ay. Bhavada. Kem chai tabiyat? Very well. This man here, he gave me a start. He gave me a start. Five days. I think it's not enough ink in that other one. P35. 
ayat so open P35 P35 so these are for your quick reference you know one hit another hit another hit and this one and this one you know maro saligo maro you know right at the bottom on the top of the two pages right sex between father-in-law and daughter-in-law sex between father-in-law and daughter-in-law then on page 35 you see verses 15 to 18 verses 15 to 18 frame them 15 to 18 frame them frame them now here we read make the guy to read it speaks about Judah you know the story he's going to Timna to shear a sheep and he sees a woman sitting by the roadside he thinks she's a harlot and verse 16 says, and he turned unto her by the way and said go to I pray thee I'm begging you let me come in unto thee meaning let me have sex with you and you see the words there in brackets for he knew not that she was his daughter-in-law he said you know the words are in bracket what are the brackets doing there? You ask the Christian. What are the brackets there for? Most of the fool doesn't know. I want to know why this God put the words in brackets. Hmm? When Moses wrote these things on a tablet of stone and God told him, now these words put it in brackets. Is that what he told him? Why the words are in brackets? He doesn't know. He said, that means these are not in the original manuscript. These are the words of the translator, the editor. He's editing it. He's trying to exonerate the guy. That maybe the poor fellow didn't know. Maybe he knew. Because here we hear today, guys are committing incest with their own, own daughters, three-year and five-year-olds. This is a bloody daughter-in-law, man, and a grown-up young woman and sitting, waiting there by the roadside. She's looking for customers. So why not? Even so, so what? But it's the words in brackets. What are they for? You ask him, you shake him up. What are the words in bracket for? If he knows this, well, look. That means the guy, maybe he knew. This is your translator doing that. Have you a right to add something in the word of God? Anybody? So that's not the word of God. If the rest is, this is not. He'll have to take it that that is not. You see, right? So, for he knew not. And she said, What will thou give me that thou mayest come in unto me? Teaching your daughter's prostitution. If somebody makes a suggestion to your sister, to your daughter, she has been reading this. She won't say, You know, Sir, you know, you'll, you'll, God will put you into hell. Salah, kya baat karta hai? Huh? No, no, no. She's learned this. What will you give me? Teaching your daughter's prostitution. In the book of God, there's a lesson in prostitution. When the man says, come, let me have sex with you. So what the answer should be, what will you give me? Hmm? So, he said, I'll give you a baby goat. Why baby goat? Because they didn't carry cash or credit cards. Those days, 3,000 years ago, they didn't carry cash or credit cards. It's a joke, you see. So the guy said, I'll send you a baby goat. She said, what guarantee is there that you will send it? Pledge. You might have sex and join me and go away and don't send it then. Salam So I want some guarantee. He said, what guarantee do you want? He said, your signet means your ring and your bracelet. Bengal days to be those days. And as Asai Musa, who was carrying his hand. So the old man gave it to her and he committed incest with his daughter-in-law and she became pregnant. One hit, twins. Twins, twins like Adya. The whole chapter 38 is a very spicy chapter. It starts with Er, Onan and Shela, the three sons. Right. Er is big enough to get married, so 
the old man gets married to a woman called Tamar. But Er does something not right in the sight of God, so God kills him. That's 2 Timothy 3.16. When you're expounding that way, it says, now where does that fit in? You have the time. Where does that fit in? In that, suppose you're expounding that. 2 Timothy 3.16. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, corrections, and instructions unto righteousness. How I remember this? I remember this doctrine, reproof, corrections, DRC, Dutch Reformed Church. DRC, Dutch Reformed Church. So DRC, that, so I remember that order. I don't know how you remember all the other references, but now this is how I remember DRC. So doctrine, reproof, corrections, and instructions unto righteousness. Right? This is what, you know, anything that's come from God must fit in one of these three things. Let's take this. Can you think of a fifth, uh, fifth heading under which you can put the word of God? He can't. So no, can I? I don't want to be too clever. Good enough. That's all. We put it under the four. So where does this fit in? Er, he does something that God didn't like. So God killed him. Where does it fit in? Reproof. Reproof. So you do something like that, but God doesn't want, God can kill you. Right? That's right. Now he tells his second son, Onan, he said, now you go in unto your brother's wife and be a child by her, so that the name of the deceased can carry on. You see, this was a family thing. You know, they want, they're very jealous to see that the name carries on. Now, mit nuhi jave dunya se. Amara beta ka naam, mit nuhi jave. So he said, look, the second fellow will do you a favor. That's a Muhammad. He married and before he has any children, he died. Now, according to the Jewish law, so you help his widow out, give her a baby, and that name of Muhammad's name can carry on. So now, according to that custom, we're not finding fault with the custom. He's doing his duty. So he goes in unto his brother and sister-in-law. And while he's about to ejaculate, the thought occurs to him. Because the seed is mine. So the kiska hoga, mera bhai ka hoga. So at the critical moment, he spills his seed on the ground. So God kills him also. Where does that fit in? Reproof. Right. Right. Reproof. Man, you're supposed to do your duty according to your custom. Do your duty, man. But no, jealousy, envy. You don't want your seed to carry your brother's name. So he spills on the ground, so God killed him for that. Right? Now we continue. So the old man tells his daughter-in-law, go and stay at your father's house until the third fellow is grown. But at the back of his mind, he was superstitious. He says, on account of this woman, I lost two sons. Sally. About to ejaculate, the thought occurs to him, that the seed is mine. Sala naam kiska hoga? Mera bhai ka hoga? So at the critical moment, he spills his seed on the ground. So God kills him also. Where does that fit in? Reproof. Right. Right. Reproof. Man, you're supposed to do your duty according to your custom. Do your duty, man. But no, jealousy, envy. You don't want your seed to carry your brother's name. So he spills them the ground, so God killed him for that. Right. Now we continue. So the old man tells his daughter-in-law, go and stay at your father's house until the third fellow is grown. But at the back of his mind, he was superstitious. He says, on account of this woman, I lost two sons. Sally, what do you call it? She's a witch. Dakan, Dakan. She had two of my sons.